Hi guys, Ben here. Welcome back to another transfer video. As usual, plenty to talk about today. Of course, the unveiling of Naby Keita, his first interviews and that on the website, which is great to see. We know it's been coming, but just great to see him in the kit, all the pictures. We all love the pictures, so that's lots of Twitter avies change for years to come. Um, and of course, plenty of transfer rumours, some rubbish, some maybe not so rubbish, um, and a confirmed signing as well. So let's get into all of that, starting with Son Hyung Min. Um, now, if you saw my IGTV video, my first ever IGTV video uh, this morning, then you would have seen that when I was asked um, if you could sign anyone, who would it be? He was the person that I, I said. He, it was Son Young min um, And this is be just before, well, probably around the same time as these links came out. Um, I think I've probably logged off of Instagram TV, and then as soon as I came back on Twitter, I saw that we've been linked with Son Young min So, um, the only downer is it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not a link that's... Um, anything worth uh, noting at the moment. Um, so the article is in the mirror, but it's a German outlet called Sport One that have um, that have written about it, uh, and it says that um, Liverpool and Man United are interested, but Pochettino obviously doesn't want to lose him. The Spurs are probably going to lose it, Oliver Eld and maybe even Dembele uh, this summer. So selling Song Yimin, who is a big goal scorer for them, is hugely versatile. One of their star players, um, he's had a good World Cup as well, despite South Korea going out. He scored that goal against Germany today. He's got a wonderful goal against Mexico in the in the previous match day. Um, his goal record for Spurs has been terrific ever since he came in. Um, his first season, uh, he only managed eight goals, but he was um, had injuries. Uh, his second season, he really found his place in the team. Got 21 goals in all competitions. Last season, 18 goals in all competitions. Um, six assists in the Premier League last season as well, and in the season before that, six assists. So he's just an all-round forward. He can play in any position across that front four. He'd be so perfect for Liverpool. He really, really would. Um, and look, the, the links are there. Uh, but yeah, I think we can. I think we can dream. I think he's an absolute. I think he's on the, on the verge of world class. But we're probably going to have to say no to that one. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about Allison. Um, there has been updates, there's updates every single day, um, so let's read the quotes from Monkey. Um, uh, so Roma have just announced Pastore, and at, at the unveiling he said there's no such thing anywhere in the world as an unsellable player. We know that, we saw Coutinho, um, Southampton saw Van Dijk, people can say that all they want, but the fact is people, everyone's sellable at a price, Barcelona saw Neymar for Christ's sake. Um, perfect answer would be to say that he's unsellable, but I can't say that because such a player doesn't exist exactly. Um, and also on Allison, there's been no offers. Um, as of now, we've had no offers for Allison, says Monkey. All I can think about is waiting for the World Cup to finish, but hopefully for Brazil, that's as late as possible. Then he can rest, come here and train with his teammates. No offer has arrived. I've read so much, but no offer has come in. That's the reality. Um, I, there you go. So we haven't we haven't put a bid in. Uh, Madrid, obviously, looking the favourites at the moment. Um, we've seemingly been priced out, so... Fair enough. No Allison, as I've been saying for a, a couple of days now, really. Um, I think it's going to be someone like Nick Pope, but we'll see. Um, Asensio, I've made a video on him uh, in the past few days. Uh, reports in Spain are now suggesting that Madrid could be willing to sell him. Um, Asensio refused to rule out a move to Anfield, as I mentioned in my last video. Um, but, you know, Fontaine Perez obviously wants to fund the deal for Neymar. Neymar is not happy at PSG, is he? I think we can all kind of put the pieces together. Um, that PSG move was a bit fishy to start with. Um, it looks like everything's going to pave the way for him to eventually go to Madrid. Will it be this summer? If so, Asensio will surely be on the move. Um, plenty of clubs will be in for him. Um, Guillaume Balaguer says we're not one of them, but the latest is that, you know, reports in Spain are saying that uh, Madrid might actually end up selling him. Next, Ryan Sessegnon, a player very sought after in the English leagues, uh, been linked with Liverpool, Spurs, Man United. Um, he signed a new deal with Fulham last summer, which I thought was very sensible. Um, he'd only really had one good season at Fulham up to then, he was still 17. Um, he's going to sign another new deal, says the Times, which, you know, I mean, obviously he's in the Premier League now, so maybe he, he's obviously justified of a, of a wage rise. Um, he, he was a their best player in getting promoted, he scored in the playoffs, so completely fair enough, but I'm surprised that there wasn't already a promotion clause in his existing deal, but he's going to put pen to paper on another deal, will there be a release clause in this one, will there be uh, a release clause for certain clubs to activate your Liverpools, your Tottenham's, whoever, 
Um, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Ryan Sessegnon will not be at Fulham, surely, for longer than this season. So it feels like asset protection to me. Uh, but yeah, there you go. The Times saying that Ryan Sessegnon will sign a new deal. He's been linked with Borna Pass. I'm sure he'll end up somewhere like, you know, club of our calibre. But not for now, seemingly. And I think it's good. I think him getting a full season guaranteed playing for Fulham will be perfect. We don't want to see another Jack Rodwell situation or a, or a Patrick Roberts situation or, um, or you know, John Bostock situation where, where players' careers stagnate. Uh, so let's hope that's, that's good for him. Another thing that's popped up is Max Meyer. <laughs> Not a name you've really heard for a while, but apparently we turned down the chance to sign him on a free um, from, from Schalke. That's according to Build. Obviously, we, we, bought, we, we signed John Matip on a free from Schalke uh, a couple of years ago. Could have done the same with Max Meyer. He's only 22. Um, but apparently we, we turned down the opportunity, wages were a sticking point um, and we've just signed for Bino and Cater, so we're not exactly on the lookout for a central midfielder which is exactly where he's been playing uh, all of the last 12 months for Schalke. No goals or assists last season so he's not exactly a player that can get forward brilliantly if, if stats are anything to go by. So worth a mention and yeah, looks like our midfield as far as you know central midfielders that can play in that defensive role or, or in that sort of orthodox midfield role were absolutely sorted for, um, which indicates maybe you know, James Milner, Adam Alana sticking around, hopefully. Um, and Naby Keita is a red. Let's look at some of his quotes. Um, he's obviously buzzing. He's been training as well on his, on his conditioning today, which is just awesome. It's, it's not even July yet. and He's already getting started, getting a head start, um, which I, 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 I find great. Uh, when you see how they performed last season, it makes me want to do the same and to be a part of this team, says Gator. I would like to be able to achieve a similar kind of season with the next season, but even better. That's right, I mean, we need to win trophies. Um, I chose Liverpool because it was a team I watched often, and I also spoke a lot about it with Sadio Mane, good lad Sadio. He told me a lot about the team and the club. Uh, I also spoke with the coach who told me about the project for the team and that motivated me to be here. That is exactly the words you want to hear from a star player that's turning down Barcelona to come to your club. We're going places. Um, Gerard presented him with a number eight jersey, a jersey I bought today as soon as all this came out. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'd have seen my post and how happy I was. Um, ben might say if you're not following. Uh, it was an incredible day for me, he said. He gave me the number eight jersey. When it happened, it was a surprise. I didn't expect it. Blah, 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 blah. Naby Kate is delighted to be a red. Everyone's delighted Naby's a red. And let's go and win the league. Next, um, Danny Ings obviously is going to be on the way out. He's massive odds on to leave Liverpool. Um, Fenerbahce have been linked today. Uh, that, that's that's uh, from Turkish Football, uh, the, the publication out there in Turkey, saying that he could well join Fenerbahce. So, seems fair enough. Absolutely no complaints there. And finally, Liverpool have signed a player today. That's right. Uh, Steven Gerrard's cousin, Bobby Duncan, uh, has joined for Manchester City. He spent six years there. He's Liverpool born. He's a centre forward. Um, Liverpool paid 200 grand, so you know they're quite serious about this this signing. Um, not the first player we've seen leave Man City for more opportunities, perhaps in recent years. Um, you know, Jaden Sancho went to Dortmund and has had a good season over there. Came into the team in the back end of the campaign and looked really impressive. Um, Phil Foden has, has stuck around at City, um, so there's no there's no clear right or wrong thing to do for these youngsters. But you know he's obviously been given assurance, just like Dominic Slanky was, and just like Ryan Brewster, who's just signed a new deal at Liverpool. Obviously, was these guys are getting opportunities. Such great case studies with Ben Woodburn from the season before, the one just gone, Trent Alexander Arnold, who continues and has nailed down the right back slot. There are opportunities to get into this Liverpool side, no matter what age you are, no matter what pedigree you've got. If you're good enough in training, Jurgen Klopp likes you, you've got a chance. And that's exactly the kind of message we should be sending. We convinced Ryan Brewster to stay, which, you know, it looked like he wasn't going to. You know, we've seen Jerome Sinclair leave. Uh, we've seen one or two others fall by the wayside, but looks like we've got our act together with the academy. Everything's set up nicely. And Bobby Duncan uh, joins the Reds. That's it for the day. That is it. If we touch on the World Cup, as I always do, today has been another really exciting day. Germany are out of the World Cup. Who would have predicted that? I must say, I thought they looked a bit ropey in the warm-up games. I watched the game against Saudi Arabia. I just thought, these guys have just got no pace. I'm not convinced on Timo Werner's ability to leave a line for Germany just yet. I think he will be able to in a few years, maybe the next tournament or the next World Cup. Uh, Mario Gomez is still on the squad, so the, the depth they've got up front isn't quite there. Um, midfield, slow, you know, defence, ageing a bit. Um, not exactly the best defensively, the, the fullbacks. I know Kimmich's obviously a great um, great ball player and you know he can, he can cross a ball, but defensively, question marks, especially against Mexico. 
the Germans are gone. Um, so, you know, depending on where England finished, the draw might have opened up for them. If they do finish second in that group, uh, which, you know, they play Belgium tomorrow, then they're looking at a second round game against uh, Colombia or Senegal or Japan. Uh, and then Sweden or Switzerland in the quarterfinals, who knows what they can do. Um, Brazil beat Serbia 2-0. No Firmino for them tonight. He didn't even come on. Coutinho uh, set up Palier's first goal. I, you know, I know Coutinho's not a Liverpool player. Some of you maybe don't care. I was getting on. But for me, he's been Brazil's best player at the tournament. And do you know what? I think he has been the best player at the tournament. You can give me Ronaldo. You can give me Kane. I know they scored more goals. But I think Coutinho's been the most impressive. Um, his goal in the first game was maybe the goal of the tournament. His goal against Costa Rica was the huge match-winning goal that probably saved Brazil's entire campaign. And then tonight, a lovely assist, maybe the best assist of the tournament. Um, it's just general play. He's Brazil's best player, and I think he could still fire them to the trophy. There we go, guys. As I say, follow me on Instagram. There's plenty going on over there, including IGTV. Loads of stories today, including the, the um, documentation of me going to purchase this shirt immediately after uh, the, the news was announced that um, Cater was a red and number eight. Um, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, all the same. Uh, and subscribe here if you haven't already. Uh, please do. Let's get to 4K before the season starts. I mean, that's, that's the least we can do, really. Maybe even 5K. Uh, but yeah, hit subscribe to help me out with those targets. And I'll see you next time.